<laughs> so this is an amazing experience for students. So Reed will bring my computer back and we will get started. So was everyone able to download um, the files? You got an email last night and okay, okay. And if not, there's a link to download them from um, where, where we're gonna go now. Okay, so this document, if you wanna go here, this is a slide set that we'll work from and, and there's a bit.ly link up there. And what we're gonna do is just, um, we've collected the images through LCO last week. We, I went through the double star selection process. I will tell you if you wanna implement this, you can always reach out to, to us and figure out how to do it, but also there's YouTube videos on how to select double stars that I made, um, and a, a lot of the processes that we that are required for this whole process, this whole uh, research process. Um, we're going to do just the data analysis part today, so that's why we took the images for you. And we have a couple different methods that we're going to show you for data analysis. I know five or six of you in this room have already done this with your students. Um, what we're going to do, double stars are interesting because if we can figure out uh, their orbits, we can determine masses and all kinds of exciting things follow from that. Uh, we are going to measure between the two stars just two things, the position angle and the separation between these two stars. And we're going to walk you through this process. What double stars can do for you, a whole bunch of things. We're going to focus on data analysis, we'll hope, which will hopefully increase your self-efficacy and your science identity. So you'll feel like scientists. Okay, so <clears throat> the links here, there's more information about the particular stars that we're studying. There's a link, and, and you don't need to go there right now. Um, there's a link to the data if you didn't download it. Um, and the data analysis spreadsheet where you're gonna eventually put your data. Okay, and I've broken, I've broken you up. Is everyone able to get into this document? Not yet. I want to make sure that everyone's able to get in this. Um, and I've broken you up to, to zones. Each zone is going to do a different double star. Question, Jonathan? Oh, the link. <laughs> so there's. There's what we've done, let's see, Michael, do you want to describe what we've done with the photometry files? Or I can too, but do you want to? Uh, okay, so in uh, the folder, there's uh, six. Is it on? Oh, it mustn't be on. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so there's, I think there's actually seven directories, but there's six directories relevant to your zone and once everyone's finished with the link, they'll be able to see what zone it is. In there, there is one FITS file, which is a kind of a stacked image of all of the images that were taken. So most of the observations were, there were, it was either 10 individual images or 25 individual images. Uh, and we've just have that uh, stacked version there. Um, and if you look in the directory, uh, there's one, two, three, four, five. So. Have you split them up? No. So what you'll do is in your in your group, each each table will select one of the one of the stars. So kind of just talk to your neighbors and say, hey, we're gonna take star or we're gonna take take folder three or we're gonna take folder five. So within your zone, you all have a star, and there are lots of images of that star. And we've broken them up into five folders. So you choose a folder at your table. Each person is going to do their own individual image. Okay, so uh, because some of you actually have done double stars a bit and some haven't, I thought I'd introduce a new method to do it for you. But it sounds like Mac people have had a problem installing Aladdin. There's only four tables. There's four tables here with people in them. One of you is group one, one is group two, one is group three, one is group four. Just talk amongst yourself to figure that out. <laughs> oh, that's on the, the slide, the last slide. Which star? It's based on zone.
It's okay if you double up on an on a image. There's folders. Did you download the data yesterday? Ooh. Zone C. Zone C. Sorry about that. Um, Zone C, if you guys go to the star that's not on this list. Yes, sorry about that. That's not on this list. There are six stars on this list. I believe there are seven stars in the folder you downloaded. Go to the one that's, thank you. Go to 17153, zone C. Yes, in the zip file you download it. I don't know if it'll work or not. And choose a group to get an image. There's only one FITS file per star, which is OK. We're going to show you how, if you don't have Aladdin, we're going to show you how you can use Afterglow to make a measurement on that FITS file. That's going to take a few seconds. OK. okay. So historically, now that everyone's kind of downloading and getting things going, double stars isn't my field. But historically, double stars, you could do a double star measurement by putting some kind of uh, grid thing on your eyepiece. I've never done it, but you could actually measure how far away two stars were from each other and the angle they are away actually visually. So that's the his history of the double star measurement. And then as times progressed, uh, then you could measure the position angle and distance from an image. And in the past, uh, the image wouldn't be plate solved. You just know how big each pixel was in arc seconds and then what angle on the image you've made to get the position angle. And then you report that. So historically, once we got into uh, taking images with CCD cameras, that was the fundamental measurement. But in the last five or 10 years, uh, plate solving has become rapidly much faster. So you can then do the measurements in directly in RA and DEC uh, from any sort of catalogs. So uh, depends what your students want to do. Maybe you want to click and just drag and just go done. But if you want to take your students a bit further and perhaps you pick a double star and you want to go back and look at the position in catalogs like 2MASS, which was in the 2000s and SDSS, which is I think late 2000s. You could go back to the digitized sky surveys, which is photos from, you know, the 80s and 70s. And you can measure the double star over a long period of time. So you can, one of the beauties of the double star project is it can be as simple as open an image, click and drag, get two values, up to mining the whole entire virtual observatory for all of the positions of stars. So it depends what, what you want to do with your students. So I'm going to show you the simple, quick way to do it, where in this case, all you need is the one FITS file. Does everyone see the FITS file for your star in the data? OK. OK, there's a, there's a whole bunch of um, PSX photometry files. But if you're just looking at the FITS file, um, and you downloaded that. If you go to uh, Afterglow, okay, so does everyone have Afterglow open? Okay, so you can go 
it should open up in your browser if you go Skynet um, and start typing in, or afterglow.skynet, if you start typing that in because you used it yesterday, it should come up. How do you get a local file into Afterglow? That is the next step. In Afterglow, in Afterglow, I'm just going to click the Open File button, Upload, find your image wherever you downloaded it, your FITS file. Oh, sorry. Files. If you go to your files tab and go to workspace. Go to Files, Workspace. Let me place it back here again real quick. That's just kidding. It's on the. Oh, email it to us. Okay, so we just had a question about what's the difference between the various tools and why did you download Aladdin? So in Afterglow, Afterglow is online and you can upload a FITS file and do a, a position angle and separation distance by clicking and dragging. Uh, you can also do it in Astro ImageJ, but then you have to install it. There's no adv necessary advantage to doing it that way unless you don't have Afterglow. Uh, but the third way, Aladdin, is the method you'd probably use if you wanted to extend your students beyond just clicking and dragging and measuring uh, to work with directly with RA and DEC. And maybe you'd like to introduce trigonometry and position angle and, you know, if you want to get a bit mathsy. Exactly. So there's several different levels that we're talking about here. And right now we're doing the simplest once we figure out which files we need. So is everyone able to get your, an image into Afterglow? So if you go to the open file and um, it, sh it might open up files, go to workspace. And you should see an upload button. Did that work? It was taking a little while. Do you have it? Do you have it? It's just loading. OK, so it, apparently it's taking a little while to load. Let me show you, just watch for a second while it's loading, how to do the measurement. So once you have your image in, and you learned how to work with images, 
You can, these um, LCO telescopes, the pointing is so fun. You look at the very center, and that very center is your double star. Here it looks like a blob, so I'm going to change the saturation percentile. Um, oops, wrong way. And we can see in the middle our double star. To measure the position angle and separation, we go to the plotter tool, which is the fourth tab on the right. Turn on the centroid clicks, turn it on. Oops. Click on one star, drag to another star, and we have our position angle. And for double stars, we use degrees east of north down here, 240.765 degrees east of north, and our separation, 7.991 arc seconds. That's the measurement. That's once you figure out how to get your files downloaded and uploaded, it's that simple to make a measurement. And we didn't have to download Astro Image J or Aladdin, which are other tools that we can use. And we're going to show you a neat trick in Aladdin in a second for those of you that were able to download it and you can work together. OK, are your files um, in Afterglow yet? OK. <laughs> OK. Did everyone follow this, the th like three steps to do the measurement? <laughs> OK. You just do the, this, oops, the um, show plotter and turn on centroid clicks, oops, and then drag from one star to another, and it measures. OK. Michael's going to take over to talk about the photometry in Aladdin, I think. I'll mention it when I do my... Okay. Okay, so I guess everyone's waiting for things to upload. Uh, so Aladdin, so that's, a, that's a simple way of doing things. Uh, the more complicated way... Ah, there we go. ...is to use Aladdin. And you would use this if you wanted to extend out uh, from just a simple measurement into a, a full research project, perhaps. Because uh, well, one of the features of Aladdin, which we won't use, but I'm just pointing it out, is that you can access those fonts are tiny on those big screens. But you can trust me, on the left here, you have Hubble Space Telescope, Sky Mapper, SDSS, DSS, ZTF, all of the sky surveys. And this is images, and then there's another little tab you, you can't really see called catalog. So you can download pretty much any publicly available kind of data in image or catalog format uh, into Aladdin. Uh, but if you uh, drag and drop a FITS file into Aladdin, so if you get a FITS file and just drop it in, it will open up uh, in Aladdin. If you scroll your hand around uh, on the image, you can see at the top of the image the, there's an RA index. So the images nowadays are generally just plate solved anyway, not like in the past. So you can actually just work in RA and DEC. Uh, you can do hold down your right mouse button uh, and change the brightness and contrast. Not exactly what you're sure what you do with the trackpad. But I can look it up in a sec. But here we have the double star in the center. Now, in Aladdin, there is actually a kind of similar tool uh, to measure the position angle and separation, but it doesn't kind of snap to the stars in the way that Afterglow does. But if you want to get a, a, an estimate of what your position angle and separation is, then you can use the disk tool on the right and drag out uh, a line. And the number, it, it's, Aladdin has pr an issues in the sense that it has very small fonts and it has some kind of annoyingly small symbols. But if that is not an uh, impediment, then you can uh, uh, use Aladdin. So it says here 7.857 arc seconds. And if I maximize this, Uh, 
Ah. <laughs> Here we go. I was hiding, but sorry. Uh, well, how does it skip plate solving? Uh, okay. Uh, well, it skips plate solving because both LCO and Skynet are flat field, bias, dark, and plate solve their frames ahead of, ahead of time before the user gets them. If you had your own telescope, you could drag your image into the online astrometry.net thing and plate solve it and then bring it back down again and then it'll be essentially the same thing. So if you have your own observatory, that's what you could do, I think. Yeah, it's an unnecessary step. And that, okay, so in, in Aladdin, if you want to get an estimate of the position angle and uh, distance, which is, it's not entirely a formal uh, measurement like in Afterglow where it's centroids because you're just dragging a line on the image. Get rid of that. Uh, if I drag from the center of the star, one star to the center of the other star, uh, just a line using this disk tool here, D-I-S-T, um, it will tell you how far, how long that line is, eight-ish arc seconds. And if you hover over the line, line down below the image, uh, it has the distance and the position angle. And I'm very aware that the fonts are quite small, so it's a bit fiddly. Uh, where the tool is? Ah, it's, it's, so it's a little, if you hover over, Hover, hover your mouse over the line, underneath Underneath it will show, show you the position. That's not how we'd measure it in Aladdin, but that will give you an idea of what answer you should expect, or ballpark answer. Okay, so the line you make by clicking on the disk tool on the right-hand side here, and then you come over onto the image and drag a line. Um, it's usually the equivalent of mouse wheel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the double star should be in the center of these images, at least. Or not centroid, sorry, yeah. the, the, the center to center. Yeah. I can't see yours though. Is that, oh, but that's a different star. That's probably a different yeah, yeah. Yeah.
Your images should be completed on Afterglow now. Some of them are coming in. No, no, just double click on it. Please. You have oh, to choose. You, just, you actually just drag the PIX file into a ladder. And that file to the, this. Yeah. Uh, if you the, find the PIX file in, the, in your directory. Oh, I do it. Well, can you just send that? Then I upload it here. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can extract from the Your double star is in the center. Oh, okay. So you're just looking at the. Oh, that one's very close together. Yeah. Okay. And then you got to yeah, go in. I'm just waiting for everyone. We're just measuring the position angle where the star is over, you know, relative to the second, the first star and how far apart we are. And that's all, that's all we need to do. Just getting the RA injection, the photometer. That yeah. and after. So you have to, the simple version is you upload a pitch file, point and click, then after go, bang, done. And oh, this, or this, or whatever. So if fun. you can get 
lots of measurements in different catalogs than you do. Okay. So we made the decision that's a 35 minute workshop that we wouldn't get you to go all the way and write a paper and all that sort of stuff. Just familiarize us, uh, yourself with the tools. Now, what I'm going to show now is uh, why would you use Aladdin when it's harder to use, harder to see, clunky, you need to install it. If you have a Mac, it tells you that your computer might be broken or whatever. Why would you inflict this pain on yourself? Uh, and it's, there are other tools, and Louisa will talk about some other tools later on, but this is just a particular tool. Um, with Aladdin, uh, or you can start to access uh, catalogs and data in a kind of semi-visual manner. So we have the FITS file that we put into Afterglow, and we've drawn a line to get an idea of the position angle, even though you have to squint to see it. But the other thing that you can do in Aladdin is you can uh, drag and drop catalogs. So, oh yes, it's the right star. So if I drag... These files here in the one, two, three, four, five directories are just standard sort of comma separated value files that you can open in Excel and it'll pop up uh, just like an Excel file. So uh, CSV is a pretty common format in astronomy uh, for catalogs. So this is just one of those. If you open it up in a text editor, let me just open up in a notepad here. Uh, you see it's just common separate, separated values. One column is RA, one column is DEC, the X pixel location, the Y pixel location, some brightnesses and errors. Uh, you could, if you really wanted to make it hard on yourself, go and find both of your stars in the 1,000 lines of uh, stars in this text file. That would be a lot of fun. But the other thing you could do, I just wanted to show you what it was, so it's not just a black box file, is you can drag and drop this catalog into Aladdin. And once again, getting out your magnifying glass, because Aladdin, someone should inform Aladdin that uh, everything's a bit too small. You can see uh, there's a little dot here, little dots there. Now what those little dots are, are the, the positions from that catalog you dragged and dropped overlaid on your image. So in Aladdin, the image is just there to kind of visually let you know where you're looking. Uh, and you can use the select tool, and I find the easiest thing to do is to drag a box over your star, stars, and down the bottom it will get those to the lines corresponding to that star out of the photometry catalog. And you have RA and DEC there. Now, if you remember, traditionally double stars, you even measured it with your eye, or you measured a position angle and distance on a FITS file that wasn't uh, in RA and DEC. Nowadays, it's quite easy to get everything in RA and DEC, so you can work in the fundamental measurement, which is the position. So what Afterglow is doing and what Astro Image J will be doing is actually measuring the RA and DEC and then behind the scenes calculating the position angle and separation. But here you can actually start from the RA and DEC and go from there. And really it's, well, it, it's simple enough trigonometry 
to take the RA and DEC values, which are just in degrees. Separations, very easy. Position angles, a little bit harder. Uh, but it, so we can, here's RA and DEC, and if you select them with these tiny little boxes and right click, you can copy these entries out to Excel and you have all of these various options. But if you copy it out, uh, copy all measurements to Excel, now it's, you know, it's in your copy and paste and you can control V or go to the edit menu and paste it into an Excel document. Uh, I'll just put it randomly over here. So you can see uh, I can paste, this isn't my computer, so I'm not exactly sure what to press, but yeah, so you can get those measurements out uh, into whatever tool you'd like to use. You could also, you know, do it in pairs and one person could write the RA and DEC in while the other person's measuring it. So yeah, this workshop's not about giving you one method of doing it, it's about giving you a variety of options. So, but if you have a handy little spreadsheet that's prepared earlier, uh, you can actually, if you see here, that there's a bunch of measurements uh, that two amazing people put in the other day, me and Rachel. You put the measurements in, this is a kind of Excel spreadsheet that does the calculations for you, and it will, and these, each of these is a separate photometry file, and a different measurement at a different time. And you can see here is a plot of right ascension, and a plot of declination, and you see each of the little dots here is one of your individual measurements, so, and so you can kind of see how accurately uh, you can measure the separation and position angle relative to the measurement error. And maybe do you want to explain? What do you do in a double star paper usually? Oh, yeah, yeah. so yeah, so this was um, a little hectic for everyone, but you can see once you get your measurements, actually the fact that we're getting measurements within like half an hour is pretty amazing. Your students can do that. Um, and these measurements are publishable because if you're studying a star that's been studied for 150 years, we have some of an orbit calculated, and now if it hasn't been looked at for 50 years, you have a new data point. And the Journal of Double Star Observations was created 25 years ago or so to capture this data for the um, Washington Double Star Catalog. Um, and so these, these students can write, thank you, Michael, um, students can write papers um, publishing this data. And so they're learning how to write. So I will tell you, the eight-week seminars that I teach, we do all of this stuff in the first four weeks, collecting images, first selecting a star, then collecting data, analyzing. And then the second half of the course is learning how to write a paper for publication. And um, you can see on the screen one of the JDSO articles from students. Um, and there, I think that looks like Astro Image J measurements, but they learn, you know, how to look at, talk about error, how to, um, they see how the nature of science is kind of done. Uh, they collect 10 different images. They start to get a sense of why isn't every image exactly the same? And you can talk about this, you know, the scintillation in the atmosphere and why we have to take multiple images and do standard deviations and all that. Um, and then they have to write up their, you know, conclusions. And it's it's a really amazing process. This, for many students, this is the first time they've really had to critically think scientifically and definitely to write scientifically. Um, and then they can, and the papers get reviewed and they get back their reviews. Feel free to talk to Kalei Talk about <laughs> students and reviews <laughs> um, and getting them to write better. Um, but that's the process. And um, we have built a big community around Double Stars. And so if you are interested in doing this, there's uh, resources, there's people that will help. And um, I think that's, we originally thought like we'd get all our data and maybe we could even write a paper from this workshop, but that was ambitious. Um, <laughs> so, and we did, you know, we wanted everyone to get a piece of data and put it in those spreadsheets. Don't worry if you didn't get to that point. Hopefully you've seen sort of, how simple it can be, even though this was very rushed and little technical difficulties. I'm happy to address questions at the break and and now. <laughs> Question. Yeah. 
So, okay, that's a great question. Um, those PSX files are automatically generated through, the, in this case, it was the LCO pipeline. Um, and so, on the images that you're taking. They... Yes, uh, I wasn't, I was gonna move on, but I'll give you 30 seconds. So, uh, the advantage of Aladdin is you, it's extendable. So, on the left, uh, you see here we have optical, there's Sky Mapper, and there's DSS and other things. When you start uh, going into the data, if it's if you go into Two Mass or Spitzer or you know uh, DSS Sky Mapper, uh, and you go into um, I'm not going to show you. I'm just going to do it quickly. If you go into say Sky Sky Mapper, and I press load, uh, different version. If you press load. Uh, it will bring in one of these catalogs and overlay it on the image you have open. And then it's the same process. Uh, there'll be a new, it's usually a new box on your image. <laughs> Sky Mapper apparently doesn't have that today. But there'll be just new boxes on your image and then you can get the RA and deck from there. And it, then you can go, okay, now I'm gonna open pan stars and see where your double star was and at what position, angle, and distance it was when Panstars took the data. And then you can click over here and you go, how about the VVV Vistas, this Chilean survey from some time or other? That would be taken at a different time again. So Aladdin's annoying to use, visually a bit tricky, but then you can extend it further. But if you're just doing something simple, Afterglow is probably the best bet. Yes, question. Anyone? Um, thank you. If so, if we want to do this with a student, you said there's lots of resources available, and I know you gave us lots of them in here. Are there additional things we should look for, or is everything we're given <laughs> email you? Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, some teachers have created it very step by step, step through, very clear to be used with younger kids, like year eight kids, and stuff yeah. like that. And, yeah, and I have a whole Canvas course that I can just give you, and I, we've created a, a Google Docs course that I can give you with videos and links and how-tos and all that. Okay. All right, it's uh, time for break.